when you squat, you deadlift, you do big movements like that, you train your CNS. You're to, turning everything on. Yeah, you're, you're to fire really hard, right? Yeah. And that ability to call upon all those neurons, like all at one time to move weight like that has to play into all the other muscles yeah. that you're training. Hey, real quick, look, I'm going to give away a free program right now, MAPS Anabolic, for one of you lucky viewers. Leave a comment below, subscribe to this channel, and turn on your notifications. Do all those things, and if we like your comment, I'll give you free access to MAPS Anabolic. One more thing before we get to the rest of the show here. We're running a sale right now. It's called the MAPS Power Bundle. Here's what you get. MAPS Strong and MAPS Power Lift combined in the Power Bundle. It's only $79.99. That's a huge discount from the $300 retail price. So if you're interested, go to mapsmarch.com. All right, here comes the rest of the show. Hey, fellas, you want bigger arms? Stop skipping leg day. Yeah, yeah. bro, because working your legs builds your biceps. Yeah. <laughs> I, okay, so I, does, huh? I actually remember hearing that when I was younger. and Didn't it, buy it, right? It, yeah, I didn't Me buy either. into it. I ignored it. So you, you have to explain to the audience what's really going on. I think... Uh, I didn't understand uh, the, what the central nervous system was responsible of at that time. And so it just never made sense. How could squatting do anything to my arms? Well, it's, okay. So when you work out with resistance, right? So you do strength training, you, there's a localized uh, muscle building effect. So if I work out my, my bicep, most of the muscle building effect goes to the bicep that I'm working. But there is a systemic muscle building effect. And there's studies that actually show show this quite um, effectively, right? So there'll be studies where people will have one arm be incapacitated and they'll have a control group. So one arm incapacitated, they do nothing. Then they'll have another group, one arm, excuse me, one arm incapacitated, train the arm that's not incapacitated. And what they find is that when the people train the, the able arm, the arm that's incapacitated loses less muscle, okay? So it actually prevents muscle loss from the arm that's not moving because of the systemic effect. So when you work out, and this is more true for bigger <laughs> muscles, the bigger the muscle, the more the systemic muscle building effect. This is why people have observed for a long time, wow, when I when I start to squat and I get strong in the squat, my shoulders get a little stronger or my arms get a little bigger. Or when I deadlift, my calves grow a little bit or my chest grows a little bit, right? And it's not just a um, stabilizing effect, right? This is no. like a signal that that the body's producing to build into, uh, you know, it, it needs muscle to, to basically um, uh, amount to these forces. Yes. Well, is it the is systemic effect that's causing it the most or is it the adaptation process that's happening with the CNS or are they one in themselves? All the same. So yeah. it's all the same. When I say just, systemic, I mean what's happening to the whole body. Yeah, I feel know? like the explaining that you're training your CNS is a, a simpler way because that's what's really what's really going on is you're teaching but when you squat you deadlift you do big movements like that you train your CNS you're turning to, everything on yeah you're to fire really hard right yeah. and that ability to call upon all those neurons like all at one time to move weight like that has to play into all the other muscles yeah. that you're, you're well training. think about also this way right strength is a, a survival adaptation <clears throat> so uh, you know for most of human history most right 99% your body got stronger because it, it thought it needed to get stronger. There was a stress that was being placed upon it. So it's like, okay, in order to survive in this environment, obviously we need to get stronger. Um, otherwise, this damage is going to continue to occur. Yeah. And so your body gets you stronger. It would be <clears throat> counter uh, beneficial to get stronger in one part of your body and to not support it at least a little bit with the rest of your body. It made no sense, right? So because in nature... Uh, when you're moving a boulder or carrying a dead animal or doing something, right? You're, it's not one muscle in isolation. Even if it is one muscle in isolation, uh, other muscles have to be a, at least a bit stronger to, to stabilize contribute. and support, right? So it makes no sense that that would happen. So right. when you just train your upper body, yeah, most you'll gain lots of muscle in your upper body, but you're not going to reach your full potential with your upper body if your legs aren't also getting stronger as well. So you're missing like 5 or 10% of what you could be getting by skipping muscle groups. So this also answers the question then for women in terms of like training yes. the upper body to grow their legs, because I know that there's quite a few clients I've had that were just want to kind of, you know, skip or go light on arms and, and upper body and just go all heavy on, on legs. It's true. Now, of course, one of the beauties of strength training is you have the ability to sculpt your body in very specific ways, which is unique to strength training, right? I can, I can look at my body and say, I want more shoulders, more triceps, 
uh, more quads, less glutes, whatever, and I could focus more or less on different parts of my body. Yeah, you can't do that with cardio, right? You can't get on a piece of cardio equipment and say, I want to look yeah, like this afterwards. Yeah, no other, pieces, no other forms of exercise really do this really well, like strength <laughs> training. However, completely neglecting certain muscle groups means you're also going to take away from the potential of your muscle groups that you really want to build. So it's okay to say my traps are a little too big, so I'm going to work them less or, ooh, my legs are outbalancing the rest of my body. But most people that skip leg day aren't doing that, right? Most people that skip leg day, it's not because their legs are too muscular. Like how many guys, you know, skip leg day because, oh, my legs are so buff. That's yeah, why yeah. I'm not squatting. That's not what it is because they're lazy. Working out your legs is hard and they want the beach muscles. Not realizing that skipping legs is also taking away from their ability to build those beach muscles. Did you guys watch the uh, Adam Project? Oh yeah, that was oh, yeah. a great movie. You just rem you, did you remember? The, you remember the scene where he, his younger self oh, yeah, makes yeah, the yeah. comment about his? Do I skip legs in the <laughs> yeah. future? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's just like yeah, like give all this uh, attention to his body now instead of like you know his brain. Yeah, like, he's, yeah, like, yeah. Talking I shit really enjoyed it. Yeah. I thought I was. It was one of the. They better casted it to really well too. The kid acted like he did. Yeah. Such a great great job. I've never seen that kid in anything else before. So this is a pure Netflix movie, right? I yeah. believe so. Wow, they're doing a good job. This one was a this was a good one. I really thought it was, you know it had that kind of free guy feel to it. Yep. You know, it was it wasn't it wasn't so like I know like if you're a hardcore sci fi person, I know you probably could have a lot of critiques on like the the I did. spaceship and <laughs> yeah. the futuristic the science part. in there. Yeah, but I, I I think it was geared more to be heavy on the you know being fun and funny and, and emotional. And, there was yeah, some like no, heart tugging it, moments. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They, I think they did a really good job. Yeah, no, Jessica and I had a discussion about this because we're always arguing over sci-fi. She said, you like sci-fi? I hate sci-fi. And I'm trying to explain to her, like, there's really good sci-fi that's yeah. out there, right? So well, she thought this was, so she's like, fine, I'll watch this because it's, it's sci-fi, but I'll watch it. So we watch it. She's like, that was really good. And I said, honey, I said, it was a good story. I said, but the sci-fi part of it sucked. Like, yeah. real good sci-fi? It was a nod. It was believable. It was a nod to yeah. a lot of other uh, franchises out there. And you could see, like, with the, like, lightsaber references and, yeah. like, all these type of, like, the tech they kind of threw in there. But, I mean, the wormhole uh, pulse or whatever, like, you know, that was kind of new, I guess, yeah. in terms of, like, a, an original idea. But, yeah, it was really the story that was great. Yeah, I hate it when sci-fi movies make the future look like, like all of a sudden we're not humans anymore. Like yeah. I'm going to control the spaceship by doing all this stuff over. Like yeah. why would like you we can't ever just do it right in front of yeah, you? Why would we efficient? invent anything like this? Like, <laughs> oh, so inef <laughs> inefficient. Like we, we became stupid. That's like a uh, minority much. report. Yeah. That scene in minority report where they're doing the stuff. Yeah. On it. Like who's going to do hand this? Gesturing was going to be the thing, you know, like I kept waiting for this to be everywhere. Like, shh, dude, shh, well, shh. you know what? So, okay. So Sal's new car has that, right? Yeah. Where it, it, it's like, you can turn the volume up. By it's doing to this. flex. It's so, it's so, it's so stupid though. Yeah. Him and I were in the car together. You put two loud mouths that talk with their hands. Yeah. And the fucking mu music's going on the whole That's time. That's You're going to get people like <laughs> screwing everything up. Yeah. Like, him and I are talking back and forth. Music on, off, yeah. on, off the whole time because we both are, are moving it's, our hands. I think it's just a flex. Like you have your yeah. friend in the car, like, you know, you don't say anything. You're like, turning it up with your finger. Whoa, that's cool. That's about it. I don't, I don't know. I, I do think it would be cool though. Like uh, I've seen videos of some uh, military stuff out there where they have these little mini tanks that they control with the, just these hand gestures and they get it to like move and then like turn and then fire. And it's pretty cool. Like it, it, it from a video game perspective, it feels like you got all this weird. Yeah. So I always wonder if it's, we, we are stupid and getting old. And the young generation is 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 better at it, or it's one of these things that we're testing out. I think that's what it is. You at think some so? point it's going to get so good that it'll read like uh like software that reads your your language. Remember when it first came out, how crappy yeah, it was. Yeah. Uh, now yeah. it's pretty good. Now you can yeah, talk yeah, to yeah. it. So, yeah. did you watch? Um, speaking of sci-fi, did you watch Raised by Wolves? No, or? I haven't got into that yet. I, dude, wow. I'm pumped to, to to get into that though. Dude, it's pretty. I looked at the, the trailer. Wild. Yeah. It's pretty wild now as i'm watching it like the story's <laughs> twisting and so now it's getting becoming a good story mm -hmm. but the sci-fi aspect of it was sick is so it a series or is it a movie it's a series mm -hmm. i don't know if you'll like it because it's a little twisted and dark and you might be a little too scary it's for into <laughs> religion or anything well too, i'm serious like, i don't yeah. like scary stuff so. no i why well, you know and definitely not katrina like there's certain stuff you, uh, we've talked about that i like to watch but she does not like to katrina uh treats her dreams uh like very like going to bed 
and getting like yeah. ha- messing with her dreams is like you don't she don't fuck with that. Yeah. Like she's very se- serious about that. Okay, so then so upload. You guys remember that show? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Part so two's part out. two's yeah. out. I, I pretty much binged the whole thing already. Like I couldn't help it. Was, it was pretty good. I just love the original concept behind it because not only can you upload, right? But now they're exploring the whole idea of being able to download back into like a, oh, a wow. body that they make. Uh, and, and two, like how, you know, they're able to kind of come in, corporate's able to come in and start extracting their dreams and things. And basically taking that as like uh, protected, uh, content, like, so they have exclusive rights to that content, which now that they can sell to people for entertainment and it's like these souls that dude, are in there are like doing what a all terrible this idea. You know, I was dream, like, oh my God, dude, I've had some of the most fucked up dreams of all time. Like what a terrible, I don't want to know half my dream. You yeah. ever wake up and, dr- and uh, after a dream? Yeah, but there's like, a what? lot. Okay. I remember when that show I first that came was out. so trippy <laughs> though. And we've talked about this on the show before that I, I do think that that's what's going to happen the, where you're going to be able to upload. I mean, I've talked about how, how much content we've put out written and yeah, verbal yeah, yeah. and video. So it would not be hard at when we pass to to store an AI version of ourselves. And that's kind of where, where they go with it is like you have this kind of AI version of yourself yeah. that digital other people, consciousness. Yes. That like have sort you, of acts on its own. Now, have you heard? Because these are uh, these are like not age old, but they're really old thought experiments around this. So sci fi writers for a long time have pondered that maybe we'll be able to do this one day. Right. And there's this like thought experiments. Like one of them is if we could take your your thought process, your brains, your memory, ex- extract it, put it in a computer. Is that you or is it just a perfect copy of you? Like, like, how do we know, right? How would we ever yeah. know yeah. if you did that? Like if we made an Android that exactly knew what you knew, your memories could talk like you, is yeah. that really Adam or is it yeah. just a copy? Like what actually happened to Adam? Like we yeah. would never know. That kind yeah, of I'm gone, but I, but like parts of me is living on, right? Yeah. Like the way I think, the way I talk, oh, that's, weird. Th- that's living. I really think it's cool for, like, I don't think it would be cool for me. I'm dead. Like I'm gone. Like yeah. I think it's for the people that live, that would be cool. And I've expressed that like, man, for me who lost his dad at seven, there's not a lot of footage, video. Yeah. I don't have a lot of stuff with him. If it was this time and this era, right? He was growing up in and he, let's say, did my job where he has all this content. Like for me, that would be so cool to be able to sit down and like take in all that, or maybe even interact with him. And the AI is good enough to respond mm. the way like he Superman. Would. That's what Superman yeah. did. Remember oh, when he yeah. built his fortress of solitude or whatever, uh-huh. and his he plugged in the crystals, and his dad comes his out. Dad would actually interact with him. And yeah, everything. Dude, that's yeah, hella weird. So AI, like, thank you for reminding me, Adam. There's an update in terms of robots oh, helping you it. in oh, the God. house, in the oh, kitchen, oh, and yeah. you, you know, it, it, again, I, it's so, so I felt so bad. Samsung's for now working on Listen, it. No, 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 I'm just saying, go down this rabbit hole again. The I'm thing that saying. they the the thing that you guys always see is this little <laughs> thing in the kitchen grabbing and moving things. That is the the where they're going to be stuck. Double down, bro. I, this is the, the washing of dishes. Yes. And discerning. Knowing if it's clean or dirty. I mean, yes, you could get a robot right now. We already have that like an Amazon boxing where they move things up or down or pick things up. Like that's not hard. <laughs> but, but what the, if they load the dishwasher though? Like, it, it, I mean, uh, it'll be all dirty ass dishes that they won't clean. So that'll be the, the extent of it. So then you'll have to have a, a dishwasher powerful enough in your house that will blast food that's stuck on it. That's mm-hmm. where they're hung up. And they don't ever show that in these little, bro, these little one commercials that everybody sends well, me like, oh, you've lost the bet. I'm like, no, I haven't, bro. Talk to me when one of those things. They're, they're all simulations. The None of it's like uh, real life robots they've built yet. No, I yeah. know. Yeah, no, it's all, they're all simulations. It's just funny. I was yeah. like, okay, so Samsung's now working on it. I'm like, there's going to be more of these uh, ponies in the race. Oh, man. Speaking of AI, so in that show uh, Raised by Wolves or whatever on it's HBO Max, they do such an interesting uh, job of this dystopian future where like earth is went to war with these like religious factions. And one of the groups has these, they call them necromancers. I think these uh, AI robots that destroy humans. And one yeah. of them got captured and rewired to take human embryos and raise them on another planet. So that's kind of like the, the gist of the story. Oh shit. And as you watch it, you're totally, you can't decide if the AI machines are good or bad mm. or if the humans are good or bad. It is fucked up, dude. It is super wow. twisted. Now you're binging like crazy because you're well, sick. Are you, have you have you been watching sick, a lot of so TV sick. or what? Dude, can I just tell you something right now? This is, and look, this is my own personal experience. This cold, and I, got, I tested myself four times for COVID. Don't have COVID. 
I had COVID before. This is worse than COVID. When I had COVID, it was weak. <laughs> the uncommon cold is uh, coming back. <laughs> this huh? is the worst, dude. Yeah. So what? Okay, knock so me on my ass. It's not a. It's not the flu. It's not no. COVID. So it's just a really bad like head cold and chest. Yeah, I went that. right to my chest, and uh, obviously it's affecting my voice and you know, <clears throat> makes me tired and weird. So all day long. definitely what's, sounds sexy. What is the what's know, the right? stack? Because people will DM me what you're taking, which drives me crazy when people. Are, I, do you guys get that? I get that. Yeah. I get DMs about you guys. I'm like, fucking DM them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ask me. What oh, sells? Especially now, what's sells not on Instagram. I'm like, yeah, yeah. I don't be, I'm not your middleman. So tell the audience yeah. your stack before Can I get you ask DMs sell this for me, please. Tomorrow, no. So I do, I do liposomal glutathione. I do uh, NAC. So that's all good for the lungs. I felt it in my lungs. Um, and then I'm doing the Organifi green juice and red juice mixed. So the red juice can not their like, immunity. Uh, oh, and I did their immunity. Thank you. I don't mix those all three though. So I do the immunity once a day. Yeah. And then I do the red and green juice several times a day. So the green juice, uh, it's got the ashwagandha, which is good for stress. Uh, it just may, I notice when I drink them too, those two, I feel better. So is the red juice mainly for, cause of the fatigue that you're yes. experiencing right now? Yeah. yeah. So the red juice has got a little bit of rhodiola for that. Also helps the body deal with stress. Um, all the antioxidants and stuff. Like that. But I just noticed when I mix those two and drink them throughout the day, I feel better. I just yeah. feel like, uh, uh, you know, subjectively, I just feel a lot better. Are you better. doing zinc? Are you doing any? What zinc else? and, um, oh God, I can't, I can't, quercetin. So I do zinc and quercetin as well. Mm. But I swear to God, dude, this is worse. When I have COVID, when I had COVID, it wasn't this bad. This is terrible. Yeah. I was telling Jessica, I'm like, what the hell? Well, you felt it coming on last week. I remember we were in here, what, Thursday or Friday? I got it from I, Justin. And I, <laughs> yeah. It's got to blame somebody. <laughs> and Justin. I got it from Adam. So. Yeah, I'll get out of here. I yeah. wasn't even yeah. Adam got it from Doug. My, my son's really bad oh, right yeah, now. Oh, so yeah. So what's going on? Yeah, he's battling fevers right now. He had, he. This is was one of the worst times, actually. It was weird because last week when you guys were all feeling it, he was all, also feeling under the weather. Poor kid. And this was like Dang. Wednesday. Dude, right now, like, and I know obviously all parents uh, have experienced this. If you have a over a two or three year old, you know, and everybody told me like, oh, just wait until he gets in school. It's crazy. It's but like a storm. Just it is, it's like even, even knowing that it was coming, it's way more than I anticipated. Like, you said he's sick more than he's not. Yeah, literally from October to now, I, I think there's been more days that he's been battling something than not. And sometimes it's like a just a runny nose and yeah. he's fine and he's playing like, you know, it hasn't been like fevers and crazy mm -hmm. like this every time. But man, it does feel like he comes home almost every week with a little something that he can. And, and I know that they're, they're building their immune system yeah, right it's now. It's like so. battlegrounds, you know? Like yeah. It's stronger how, after this phase. How do you, now, what do you guys do when he's like, well, fever, obviously you, you try to cool him down. Yeah, when he's got like, a fever, we, 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 toggle back and forth between Motrin and um, Tylenol. That's like, the, yeah. and Katrina is really, she like does not want to give that to him. I'm at, which is I think interesting because we're normally, I'm the one who's like, no, don't give him that. Or I'm the more picky one with his food, but she's been that way with drugs, which I love. Like she's not quick to, she'd rather try and find a natural remedy or try and see. Plus the fever's got some benefit. Yeah. You know, that's it's the, it, it uh, helps fight the the body. It helps the body fight the infection, and it builds up the immune system better. Um, but you also don't want to see your kid feel like shit, like poor kid. Uh, like, yeah. I bet he's not sleeping well at all. Oh no, the last two nights we haven't slept at all. Well, last night I got to sleep because I went in the other room. Katrina's like, you know, I'll just go in the other room. You're you're, yeah. you're going to be up all night. Were you a me. big fever person when you were a kid? Did you get a lot of fevers? You know what? I have to ask my mom. I don't remember. I do know I have a very weak immune system though. So I do. I used to get sick all the time. I've I've felt better now, like where I'm at, than I did all through my you know twenties and teens. Like I used to get sick all the time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. When, so I used I, to get high fevers when I was a kid. Really? Yeah, like my mom says one time I had a fever that was 105 or something wow. like that, like, or, or even more. And then the last time I had a fever as an adult was, uh, or a high fever was in Thailand when I got the food poisoning or whatever. And I started seeing shit. That was weird. I had 104, which as an adult is hella high. And I was yeah. looking at the walls and the walls were kind of- I heard that happens, right? It gets too high, start hallucinating. Bro, I was, the walls started moving and I started seeing yeah. spiders and shit everywhere. And I was like, <laughs> oh, that's dude. when I called, that's when I told Jessica, we're in Thailand. I said, I don't care. You got to get a doctor to come to the room. <laughs> Please find somebody. You know, it's here. interesting to think like what they used to do before we had all these tools, like thermometers and stuff to check. Like, I mean, it's- Just It's crud letting. Yeah. 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 Cut his well, leg. Yeah. I mean, you know, so I'm, I like- I'm always kind of pushing us like to be more like, okay, let's just, let's read how he's feeling and if he's communicating or if what he looks like than that stupid digital thermometer all the time. Because man, that thing 
reads a degree too high one time or whatever, and boy, that'll send you through the roof just freaking out, you know, just like, oh my God, he's he's jumped. It's like, well, dude, kids used to die all the time. When I was, uh, so my great grandparents, you talk, like uh, my grandfather would tell me this. He goes, oh yeah, yeah, your, your great grandmother had 10 kids. I'm like, what do you mean she had 10? It's like, well, you know, of four, there's six other ones that died. I'm like, what the hell? Wow. Kids used to die. I mean, this is Sicily. So yeah. my grandfather's generation was, that was hard. The generation before him in Sicily was really hard. And people would have a lot of kids and, you know, kid gets an ear infection. 50-50. Is he going to make it? I don't know. Let's so see what happens. Crazy. Really? It was that bad? Think about a bacterial infection without antibiotics. You know what I mean? You're like, as a kid, you just have to like, let's see if your body can fight it off. And kids would die, dude, all the time. Especially if they weren't like super nourished because they were poor. Mm. You know, they were surviving off of, you know, I don't know, a little bit of wheat and some beans or whatever. Oh my God. So, yeah. No, I, what? I mean, it, it's, I mean, I know we talk about how weak we are nowadays, but, uh, but I don't know, man. We saved like all the weak kids. That's why. <laughs> that's, that's, that's what, that's they what killed all the weak ones. <laughs> I was, yeah, it ain't like Sparta anymore. Yeah, really just, <laughs> yeah, I know. I was having this conversation with someone about <clears throat> testosterone levels dropping in men. And I read this uh, study that the average man in the 1930s had testosterone levels of like 1,200. It was something ridiculous like that. I actually yeah. read, I think I told you guys. And, and you know, we were, I was having this discussion with someone. I said, I wonder if that's because all the low testosterone dudes just died, mm. you know? Like, mm. that's what was left over. Yeah. Is that, you know, oh, yeah. Oh, low testosterone Johnny? Yeah, he died because yeah. we, don't have, <laughs> we don't have medicine to treat his, his, his burn wound or whatever. Well, I don't know what genetics caused this, but I was out uh, at, eating at this burger restaurant with, with my kids. And uh, this is when I was kind of hanging out with them and doing this sort of daddy and uh, you know, boys day. And we went to like the boardwalk, all this, we had a good time. We went to this restaurant and like, uh, there was these kids that came in from like UCSC and they were sitting next to us and, you know, talking and we're just kind of doing our thing and listening. And this guy starts laughing and I'm like, I've never heard this kind of a laugh before. I thought maybe he was like, like it. delayed or like slow or, you know, so I didn't like, I, I try really hard not to laugh. You know, mm. you know, in that situation where you're just like, I don't know if I, I'm allowed to laugh at this, yeah. dude, but it's really funny. <laughs> Every day. Yeah. And like, we were, we were, and I was trying to control it because the boys were almost dying laughing like immediately. So this guy would, would start laughing and then he sounded like a seal. I shit you uh, not. What? Yeah. He'd be like, ha, 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 ee, ee, ha, oh my God. and I was like, oh my God, dude. Like it was like so out of left field. Like, and, and it was funny because these other guys were like, kept cracking jokes and everything, trying to keep them going, you know, the whole time. And so we're just like barely making our way out of the restaurant. Dude, I had dude. a, I had a buddy who had a, fu a, a fucked up laugh and everybody loved it because yeah. it made everybody else laugh too. Yeah. It was know? like the best. Once you know, it was like, it was just part of his personality. And it wasn't like a, you know, some kind of condition. You ever have a buddy who laughs really high pitched, like normal dude talking, they laugh. Like, ah! like a hyena. <laughs> It's like that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Justin's like, oh, wait a I minute. I just did that. I literally did that. And I, that's my laugh. <laughs> Why am I laughing? Son of way? a bitch. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. So Adam, you, you want, you, you said you had discovered some information about one of our sponsors, something really cool. Oh, I, they, guess, about they, the name. I was looking up Caldera to see, cause I knew we had a commercial today. So I was looking up to see if there was like any new news about the company. Mm -hmm. Cause I mean, obviously we've, I've talked about. I love when Adam learned something cool. Well, no, so it would, so it, it's supposed to be like a volcano. Is that, did you guys know that? Yeah. yeah. What do you mean? Yeah. Yeah, bro. You didn't know Caldera, that. Yeah. You didn't know that. Yes, we it's did. It's like one of the most fertile uh, soils it's, you could, you yeah, could find. It's like a, it's like a, it's like a crater. That you a knew that? Left. Yeah, I had no it idea. Sunken in. It's like an old volcano. Yeah, 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 yeah. So that, and that's, that's probably why they named it that. Cause it's like Justin said, super fertile, yeah. like All lots nutrients of nutrients you, you could hope for. Yeah. Some of the most fertile soil on earth. You guys both knew that? Yeah. I brought yeah. so long, like when they were thinking of you where, brought it up? yeah, where Eden might be, right? Like yeah, they're speculating. Start listening. Start like listening it's to you more often. A caldera. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I know you really should. Yeah. Uh, Justin talks, Adam and I just look at each other. <laughs> Whisper. Oh, well, here he goes so again. It's a large depression formed when a volcano erupts and collapses. <clears throat> yeah. Um, so, okay. So now do you know why Caldera named their brand that? Or Probably that. Because it's one of the most fertile, because volcanic soil is some of the most fertile in the world. It's super full of nutrients. I was uh, just listening to a uh, podcast where they were talking about like the importance of soil and how we're not yeah. receiving, you know, the, the same soil uh, from, you know, growing 
all of our fruits, vegetables and, and crops and everything else. Like it's not, we're not getting all those same nutrients because we don't have yeah. the same soil. Yeah. Anymore. Doug, what does it say there on their website? I'm trying to find the origin of their name. Um, oh, here, you know, what? real quick, scroll down. Tell me the ingredients in their in their uh, serum again. I, I read yeah, them off apricot, the Apricot, kernel oil, fireweed, dandelion, astragalus or oh, astragalus, uh, astragalus root, elderflower. Oh boy, spilanthes. I'm not sure what that is. Mm. Um, there you go. But I do not know exactly why they named the company that. Yeah, I mean, it makes sense because uh, that's their whole motto, right? Is to make something that's supernatural, super full of nutrients, good for you, whatever. Now, Cal is Jackson Hole, is that a caldera? Ooh, I don't know. That might be why. What's that I one? Know. I can't remember it now. Why, what does Jackson Hole have to do with that? Well, it might be a caldera. It's a hole. <laughs> no, I know, I mean, but why, why, why you bring up Jackson Hole right now? Well, I mean, so I, I don't know. I have to do some research, but Jackson Hole suggests maybe it was a caldera. So you just randomly it's, thought in your head Jackson Hole. Yeah, that's why. No, was, it says Jackson Hole. Right oh, that's here. what okay. I was just asking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. I, 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 <laughs> All right. Well, I, <laughs> I thought. I thought it's not I, the only caldera, right? I mean, so right. you just brought up Jackson Hole out of nowhere. So yeah, I'm I asking. Guess, I guess why. you can't see that because it's no, on the screen right now. Yeah. yeah. No, I went. I what's that place? I went up. To uh, to visit with Jessica early on, it's a is it Crater Crater Lake? Is that it? Crater oh, Lake yeah. in Oregon? Is that it? Isn't that a caldera? Do you know that's um, one of the deepest? In, I I actually thought Tahoe was deeper, and I looked it up, and Crater Lake is even. deeper. I think Lake Tahoe mm -hmm. is an old caldera too. Oh yeah, I think so. Maybe we can look that up, Doug. If I'm not mistaken, let's I think find it's all old, of them, you guys. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> let's find all the caldera. Did yeah. you guys know? Did you guys know that Yellowstone? I, there's is a, a list. Volcano? Yes. Okay. There's a list of like most probable ways that humanity could become extinct. Uh, volcanoes, one of them. And one of the top five is is Yellowstone. Yeah. It's a fucking super volcano. What are the other four? I think about that every day. Yeah. Guys. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we need to focus on. Yeah. Okay. I think the other four are nuclear war, uh, asteroid hitting earth. I don't remember what some of the other ones were, a, a plague of some sort, but yeah, I know that's scary, everybody. Yeah. <laughs> uh, especially since one happened and the other one, everybody's threatening. Yeah. Uh, no, but the, but the super volcano that, that yellow zone could literally, and it will at some point explode. It's yeah, yeah. active. And when it does, uh, we're dead. Yeah. We're all it's dead. Really hey, how's, uh, how's, uh, uh, Twitter life been treating you? Oh, dude. You, you're, you're quite the tweeter. I go, yeah, I've been twatting on there like crazy. Such a, <laughs> Is that what you say? Such a twit. I um, it's I go off on there, dude. That's such a bad place. It's way more negative than I thought it was. Oh, it is. For oh, sure. it's so negative, dude. But it's so you, though. I mean, I felt like you, you belonged media. on there for so long. Like, you weren't really an Instagram guy. Mm. You weren't made for Instagram. No, I hate that. Why are you trying to say I'm not good on pictures? Is there any <laughs> positive like threads or is it all just like complaining? No, there's a lot of smart people on there and you can read some really interesting uh, stuff. But um, but yeah, on, on Twitter, it's like people tend to go off and then go back and forth. I mean, it's all social media, right? It's all the same garbage. Yeah. But on Twitter, I'm like way, I, and I think it's because I got kicked off Instagram. So I'm kind of like angry right now. So I'm like, all right, you know, bring it on. Yeah, I'm gonna be even worse now. Okay, so since you're now doing this, I I haven't actually ever really got into Twitter. I tried to do it for a little bit and then fell off. Uh, too do many you, words. Do you feel? Yeah, too many words. Is it too reading many is hard. It's like, it's too hard. <laughs> this is too difficult. Uh, so, do you find the same uh, addictive patterns with Twitter as you do Instagram? Like Instagram, it's really easy, and sometimes I think it's because it's visual, <laughs> it catches my eye, and then it sucks me in. And then does, do you find that with Twitter, or do you find it's uh, the, Twitter's got a better news, really good news feed. I know, but so as far so as your own, sense. your own, your own addiction to social media, is it more difficult, the same, or easier? Oh, than, that's a good than question. Instagram. That's a really good question. I think it would be different depending on the person. Um, like for you though, like does it suck you in more because it's more news and if it's you're more an arguer? Yeah, a right? bunch does of intellects in arguing. So I, you, you know, I, in more? I post way more on Twitter because it doesn't require. I think of a fucking image. You know, what I mean, I could just post what my words, yeah. which I'd have plenty of words to go around. So. Yeah. So I post more. I don't think I spend, I know I don't spend a lot of time on it though, reading other people. Yeah. Um, but it is, it's, it's just, it's like all social media. It's just a bunch of, you know, it's funny. It's like, as I'm, as I switch different, you know, social media platforms, you just realize how much society is, social media was supposed to mirror society. But what's happened is social media created a different looking society. Now society's starting to mirror social media. Yeah. Because it's literally... Um, it's advertising yourself. So if you look at like an advert, like a company, you look at a company like, I don't know, Coca-Cola, okay? 
They're going to advertise to you how great they are, how nice they are. They're not going to tell you all the stupid shit they do, all the bad stuff they do, how they contribute to obesity or whatever, right? They're going to tell you how great they are because that's your job when you advertise. You'd be an yeah. idiot if you advertised your negative. Which is what people do with their social media. They do. And not not just that, but then it's like bleeding over. It's, it's bled over into real life. So now people walk around and rather than being good people, they want you to know that they're good people. That's more important. So they have to like show you with the, 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 a shirt or a saying or a bumper sticker or here's, you know, but in reality, you're not, you're full of shit. You don't really mm -hmm. care. So it's kind of annoying. I got in a debate. I got an argument with someone over that on, on Twitter because it's like, there was an old saying in marketing to make that made fun of corporations. Now I think it's more true than ever. And it was like a corporation will, will donate $10,000, but we'll spend a million to they'll spend a hundred thousand dollars to show everybody that they donated $10,000. Right. Cause that's, yeah. what's important. Social media is like that so much. It's like, I care so much about all this stuff. It's like, mm -hmm. do you really? Well, the power of the individual brand right now is like, it's this, it's such an interesting time. Yeah. I was listening to an interview that, uh, Ty Lopez did with, um, our, our buddy Tom talking about the Kardashians and like her ability to sell like her her makeup line that she did like you have companies like uh, Maybelline and what are some of those other like brands that have been around for yeah. like 100 years right and she she did like 400 million dollars like in lip gloss dude like if those companies have been around 100 years yeah. if, and they didn't do that they can't they can't even do that this girl simply starts up a makeup line and then instantly surpasses all of them it's just the power of the individual brand now is crazy it's like anything with power right it's just two sides like sure. you could do really good with it or you could take it and do really bad. Yeah. And it's just so annoying to me with the, the like, again, the, the, the fakeness, it really annoys the shit. I don't know why it's, it's like, just gets, gets to me so much. So I see that kind of stuff and it's like, you know, and the truth is this, if you really want to, and this is just a fact, if you really want to help society and the world and the environment and be, just be the best version of yourself, there's really nothing, nothing more effective than that. Like raise good kids. Yep be a good person, be productive, like get a job or start a job, uh, be innovative. You, oh, you want to be good, uh, another good person? Buy products that are good for you, literally, because that means you're going to give more market signals to good product. Like if you just did that, you would do a lot, but a lot of people don't yeah. do any of that. Instead, they complain and they're envious and they point things out and then they have a sticker or they post something in their bio. Well, this makes me words and, and ideas instead of like actions and merit, like, uh, you know, character. Like we used to judge people on character and that's like something that's like a lost uh, idea it's, these days. It's really weird. Now, do you, do you have hope though that it's just because we're in this time where we're transitioning from like, you know, uh, two decades ago, none of this stuff existed. Now we're like learning to integrate it into our, it's definitely not going away. It's definitely yeah. becoming a part of, uh, our lives, our kids' lives, it'll be here to stay. And so do you think that part of why it is this way, though, is that this is just kind of the the, the natural progression or evolution yeah, of it? Yeah, I think it's a transition. Yeah, like I, I, I want to I believe that like... Because I think a lot of corporations are learning this. Like um, corporations will come out and they, they're they trying to play the game. Like, oh, we got to show how, how good we are. So then what they do is they come out and they oppose some, I don't know, some some bill in some state or they'll oppose some politician or some policy and then people on the other side will point out the hypocrisy and go, oh, that's weird that you oppose this, but you're still building products by children or you're still working with this country that is you know, throwing people in, in, in camps and re-educating them. So these corporations, I think, are going to learn. I think mm -hmm. they're going to learn that they used to keep their mouth shut. Then they came out and said, oh, we got to tell everybody how virtuous we are. But now they're going to learn. Uh, we're better off keeping our mouth shut yeah, because yeah. we're not perfect. And it's going to make us, we're going to end up uh, shining a spotlight on on our hypocrisy. Yeah. So I agree with you. I think it's, I, well, not, I don't know if that's what you were saying. But yeah, yeah. That's what I think. I think it's going to wash out a lot of that yeah, stuff. I and I think there's going to be a lot of people too that, that promote themselves one way on social media. And then you find out later, they're nothing like that. And that's going to, I think the... Enough times you're going to see people get the rug pulled out from underneath them or they lose everything yeah. they built because they weren't being authentic or themselves. So I think when we see that enough times, I think we will, I think we will, as a, just uh, as a society, learn our lesson and start to shape, I think. Yeah. A bit and I, I, it's a mirror for me too. I have a big mouth. My weakness is I, I'll get mad and then I'll, <coughs> I'll start going off. And then it's a mirror for me too, because I got to. I got to learn not to let shit get to me. Like I, I, I said something really mean the other day on, uh, on Twitter. It's just, this guy is lecturing me on greed. First of all, he doesn't know me, but trying to tell me how greedy I am because I think, you know, <laughs> that that businesses should be able to take their money 
and invest it and build and innovate. And you're so greedy. And, and the guy, look, and by the way, I've made my entire career helping people with, uh, improve their health. Okay. And I, I myself have had body is image issues. So, uh, you know, that's been my whole career, but nonetheless, I see this guy and he's like 400 pounds. And I said, you're like, it's ir the irony is you're lecturing me on greed. I said, I don't, I think you eat way more than you need to. <laughs> Isn't that a, a display of your own greed? Right. Wow. And that was a mean mm. thing to say for sure. But it's also a true thing to say, and I yeah. feel bad for it because I should I shouldn't say something like that. It's, you know, I, I help people through that process, but it makes me annoyed as it's hell. It's a different perspective, though, that I think people sometimes need to kind of check themselves a bit. It know, totally, it's like when you, they're out to how, how dare judge you, everybody else. Yeah, you lecture me. You don't know me. You well, know? and you're the, also greedy yourself. I think Nobody's the point perfect. you're making, though, too, that I this is I actually think this is a positive side of social media. I actually talked about this in an, an interview I did recently that. You know, because of the podcast and that we we I wait to put all this stuff out there, um, it really it forces me to challenge yeah. my own beliefs. Yeah. Yep. Because it's like you know, before the, all this, uh, I say something, you know, it may, I make a stance or I make I have an argument with a friend, you know, and that conversation is long gone. I don't revisit it maybe for months or years, have another conversation like that. We're here. Everything we say and do. Yeah, is, and then you cool off and listen to it right, later. Like, oh, right. Man. It's been yeah. posted. And then I, I listen back and I go, oh, wow. Yeah. Do, I, do I really yeah. believe that? Or, you know, or that I can produce the desired outcome of what I was trying to you right. know, promote. Or, or I can have not. a little bit of like, I'm sure you had the same perspective, right? You, you did something like that. You reread it and you go, Fuck, I'm not feeling so good right now. You know, I'm I'm sick. I'm I'm at home. I'm, I'm irritable. And, and you catch like I probably wouldn't have said that or did that if I was feeling better. So the yep. the level of you got to uh, be a bigger person. Boy, that's hard to be sometimes. Yeah, I tell you, especially when you got people coming at you and you're just like, come on, dude, you don't know. But me. it can be wielded for a good thing. I yeah. think if we uh, and so maybe we see more of that in the future of more people actually using it as a tool for personal development and self-awareness. I think that's going to happen when everybody realizes that they're, th that what they're creating is also going to come back to them. Now you're making every, yourself a target just as much. Like you see all these people on social media who pull up old tweets from celebrities and then hammer them for it. And then what do other people do? They go through these people's old tweets mm -hmm. And pull back and, and say, oh, actually, you did the same thing. Or you said it's something endless. worse. Yeah. Like yeah. when it's all out there, what was that scene? Uh, what's that movie with the the superhero family? Incredibles? Incredibles. Yeah. Do you remember the the bad guy in the first one? And he said, when everybody has uh, superpowers, uh, when everybody's super, nobody's, nobody's super. super yeah. yeah. So it's like when everybody yeah. realizes we're all super Flawed. imperfect and yeah. the evidence is there for anybody to find, yeah. that's maybe when we'll stop. And we'll start leaving each other alone. Yeah. I'd be like, ah, well, I guess. You know. <laughs> yeah. I don't want to go down. <laughs> yeah. Everybody has shut the dark fuck thoughts up right now because <laughs> we're a little fucked up. Yeah. Because we're all, you know, we're all like that. <laughs> anyway, I was having a, you know, here's a, on a positive note. I was having a conversation with my cousin who just, he just became a dad, right? Uh, great dude. I love, love, great guy. And he's, you know, the conversations I had with him before he became a father, the stuff that you tr you tell somebody before they become a parent that they couldn't possibly realize until after. Now he's like, dude, I get what you mean. So <laughs> we were we were talking, and I kept telling him like like because you know when he got his wife pregnant or whatever, I said you're gonna realize just how invincible and fearless you are now. And he goes, what do you mean? I said when you have a child, you're gonna realize how brave you're gonna how brave you have to choose to be. And he's like, what do you mean? I said, well, you'll see, right? And so sure enough, he has a kid, and he goes, I, I get it now. He goes, before I had a kid, nothing really scared me. I thought there were things that I had to be brave for, but it was nothing. He goes, now that I have a kid, mm -hmm. holy shit, it's scary. He goes, I could be a shitty dad. I could fuck up. They mm -hmm. could get sick. They could get hurt. They, something could happen. And he goes, and now I'm really scared. And I goes, I get what you mean now about having to be brave. I said, I told you, man, it's a, it's the craziest. It, nothing will force you to become a man like having a kid. Yeah. You know, or you yeah. could run away and choose not to, but he's a good man, so. Katrina and I played um, that table topics game that I think Justin brought up uh, a long time yep. ago. And I'm going to ask you a question that I got I got in trouble for. So I want to see how you guys navigate through this. <laughs> you, uh, so the, the card, if you, know, you got it. in trouble. Well, I mean, yeah, I didn't answer uh, very well. So the, the, oh, the, the card was um, so she's reading it to me. So basically, this is a question back that you guys would be, give back to your wives, which is if you had one dying wish. Uh, to to tell me before you because uh, before you die, um, what would you what would you say? What would be your dying wish to your wife? Uh, what, what would you guys say? 
So I'm on my deathbed. Yeah, you're on your deathbed. You and you're and this is th these are going to be some of the last things you speak. You're not going to be able to speak anything after this. And so, what would you say as a dying wish that you wanted? Uh, wanted erase to my browser history. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good one. No, um, well, that's a tough one, man. What would I say? I don't yeah. know. I mean, I got to think about that for a second. I think I would say, yeah. um, I, I think I would say, please try to be strong. Uh, for the kids, please try to raise them the best that you can and be and be strong for them. That's okay. it. Yeah, turn me into a robot. Um, <laughs> Stupid, you would say that. What yeah. would you tell your wife? What's the last thing you say? Yeah, I mean, uh, I don't. Uh, that's a heavy question. It'd be like, yeah, just to to live your best life going forward, and and um, you know. Hold on to yeah. memories, but but again, you have to live your own life now at this point. Stay like, celibate, don't remarry. Exactly. It's like, well, I will haunt you. I will haunt you. I'll be, your new I'll be partner. watching. <laughs> what, what did you say? What, at I, least coach him. How did you, know, you like, possibly hey, get in trouble? Try this. I, she likes this. Because I said uh, our finances. I said, could you please make sure that everything, I mean, we have, we have done enough to this point for you and my son to be taken care of that. I, I know that I'll die and know you're okay. If don't spend money. Well, yeah. So that's how no, she, re don't. that's how she, re well, I didn't say that. I just, <laughs> and, Oh my God, bro. So I got, she fired back at me. Like, what do you, I use that's something you say to some dumb girl who doesn't make any money and blows money and wastes money. Like, I'm nothing like this. She gets all defensive with me. And, and I'm like, honey, that's not, I said, you could be a fucking accountant and I'd still say the same thing. It's not that's that. That's because that's your fear. Yeah. And I, yeah. And, and I, and I said, this is, this is me. Right. So I feel like, um, <clears throat> I, it, that me going, if I know that I'm not going to be able to speak or I'm going to die and I have one last wish, it would be to take what we worked for and what we built together up until this point and 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 make it last and yeah. and i mean in, the, in my point opinion it's the same thing you're saying i'm yeah. just saying it through a finance like the yeah. financial sort that I mean you know it's funny that it's true that they, your fear came out because yeah. that's that's your thing right sure yeah. 100 percent. that's yeah. and that's why i was like it's not about you because yeah, she took yeah. it all personal like it had to like i think that she'd go you know drive a bunch of fancy cars <laughs> and like be going out and just, just blowing money out. on purses or something i'm like that's not what i'm saying yeah. that's not what i mean by that bunch i mean of parades. i mean like i would even i would even say listen take this much money go hire someone to like manage it for us so that you don't have to do that because i do a lot of that yeah. for us mm -hmm. so she doesn't have to so i'm like so I would want you to go do that so you can just focus on. Now, did she answer the question? If she died, what would she say to you? I answered it for her. I said, because then she was giving me shit. I'm like, listen, I, I mean, I know what you would say. You say, go hug my mom and kiss her goodbye and say, like, it would be all about saying goodbye to her family for yeah. her. And she goes, okay, yeah, you're kind of right. So oh, I said, no. <laughs> yeah. I said, so that's how you think. And I said, yeah. this is how I think. I think like, please God, don't let everything that we've built go away. So that uh, my, my, my wife and my kid will be okay. I would, if I, if yeah. I was dying, I'd look at you guys and be like, put maps at a ball, 75% off. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Launch 2.0. <laughs> yeah. One last sale. Yeah, might be dead. <laughs> that's a that's a hard question. You know what? You ever really such hard a good question. if you if you okay. This is literally though. If you have not ever, uh, it's very cheap to buy this little game. Yeah. It's like a, a, a like a little thing that has I don't know thousands. It's called tabletop. It's called table topics. Yeah, you just grab a card at, at dinner and you guys kind of discuss. Yeah, we do heavy. it sitting. It's so not it's, usually this heavy of a. Of a, of a oh question, yeah, they're all. Yeah. Some of them are funny. Some yeah. of but what I so Katrina and I, I I shared this a long time ago. You guys probably don't remember. It was like four four or five years ago when I was sharing like relationship hacks yeah like things like that, listening to a book together yes like yeah, I that so that. I, yeah so this was another thing that we used to do together and it's we wait till max is down and we normally do it sitting up candlelight the, in the bedroom and we're hanging out and we'll pull a card and it just it starts great conversations you know it, it starts these conversations and it's normally something like that mm -hmm. and you know even though we've been together for 13 years you learn something kind of new, yeah. like how how their brain turns. Everybody you know? has a different perspective. Too. Yeah, it is, I love listening to the kids' answers because you just you kind of see where they they're at developmentally uh, in terms of how they think about yeah. things, like black and white, or oh, there's some gray here that we yeah. need. To you ever look up uh, the top regrets people have on their deathbeds? Yeah, it's always about. It's never have anything to do with money. It it's always, always like like experiences. I wish yeah. I would have spent more time with my family, done more of this. Like it's always. That. Isn't that wild? Yeah. yeah, I know. I mean, it's not though. I mean, it's it's very. It, it's to me, it's what keeps me have trying to live as as balanced of a life as I can. Yeah. With my finances, right? Because 
and I, I'm lucky because I think I have I have a couple friends that I I, I believe are on the ends of the spectrum, crazy ends of both spectrums. Like mm-hmm. I have a buddy who like literally is you know counting every cent that goes in and out of his account and won't do anything that is wasteful and mm-hmm. is saving for whatever mm-hmm. is coming, I guess. And then I have my other buddy who's like the check is spent before it it hits his account. And, you know, there's something to to take from both of them. You know, obviously the dude who's spending money, he definitely, there's nothing he holds back on getting if he wants it, you know what I'm yeah. saying? And he's, and he's enjoying all those things. Now, heaven forbid something were to happen because he doesn't have anything saved up. Right. And then my other buddy is like, you know, Hey, we're in our forties now. I mean, at one point do you go like, you know, all this shit that yeah. you've been saving to use what's it, some it all it? for at this point? Yeah, yeah. What's it? We can't take it when we go. You know, one of my favorite things about <laughs> training uh, people in advanced age was because uh, you, I mean, you think to yourself, like, now at 43, I'm way more wise than I was at 33. And at 33, I was way more wise than I was at 23. But had you asked me at 23, 33, and now, I would say, oh, yeah, I know what I need to know. So when I had these older clients in their 70s, 60s, 70s, and 80s, I started to respect the fact that they were older. Like, well, this person's got a lot of experience. So I would love to ask them questions and they would say things that sound silly, but are so wise. Like, uh, you know, one lady, she'd been married a long time with her husband. And I said, what's the secret to, she's like, don't sweat the small stuff. I said, what do you mean by that? She goes, you know, you, at what some point you stop trying to like change your partner and you just accept them for who they are. And then it becomes a lot easier. Mm-hmm. And I've seen this with my own parents, like mm-hmm. my parents, now they've been married a long time and the stuff that they joke and tease each other about, and it might bicker a little bit, used to be big old fights when I was a kid yeah. between them. But now it's like, it's not a big deal. Yeah. So that's like a big one. Uh, another one was in the, 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 the studies actually support this is spend money on, uh, if, if you're going to spend your money, spend it to give yourself more time or spend it on experiences. I, used, I had a client used to tell me that all the time, like Sal, buying things is fine so long as those th- whatever you buy gives you more time or gives you better experiences. Otherwise, it's a waste of money. And I get, I think I understand a little bit, you know, what that's like. Yeah, so yeah. like, instead of buying something expensive, maybe you, you spend money on a more expensive dinner because of the experience you have with your spouse or Rather than, you know, spending money on, you know, cool gadgets, you spend money to have someone to help you so that you have now an extra two hours where you could be with your family, that kind of stuff. Makes sense. Totally makes sense. But you still, you still want to buy the stuff, right? Yeah. The stuff yeah. is always, it's always there. No, I think, there, I think there's a way to have balance. I think what you said with, this, it has to give me, like for me to make a decision on a purchase now, it has to give me joy, right? I have yeah. to, like... That I really enjoy. And the way I check myself is the desire to show and tell other people versus I just want to enjoy it for myself. Ooh, mm-hmm. that's a good one. Yeah. yeah it's the way I, it's like, so, do you care about other people knowing? Or yeah. Not? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Something else you told me a long time ago, I thought that was brilliant. Maybe this was you where you put stuff on Amazon and you save it. Oh yeah. Yeah. You wait like, like a week yeah, before yeah. you buy it. Uh, don't tell myself I can't have it. Like sometimes I'll, I just, I just did this. Bro, you know, I started doing well, it. I took from you the uh, places you spend the most time. Uh, yeah. Right. So your bed, your yep. car, yep. like uh, it, it, literally those things alone, um, you know, to, to kind of enhance them, it, it enhances your everyday life, not just like, you know, one time I had this experience, which I do do that. And I find yeah. value in that type of a fun. But, um, you know, in terms of like figuring out where I spend the majority of my time, like why yeah. not and enhance yeah, that? Yeah, make why it better? not? Yeah. Why not? No. Yeah. And I still so I did it like literally two nights ago. Uh, so was, you literally go on there, you put, I go on, put it all in the shopping cart, like Leave I'm going to buy it. And I, and I don't say I'm not going to buy it. Just go like, okay, it's all set to go. Like I'll, I'll get it. And what I normally do is cause we get paid twice a month. Right. So I go like, oh, when my, my check comes in, you know, it's normally between right. A, a, a pay period, right. Or something. It's like, oh, I get paid in six days when my check comes in or when we get paid, I'll go get it. And by that time, a lot of times my emotions or feelings around that thing so is, true. has changed. So true. Normally what ends up happening is, and just like what I was doing was looking for, you know, you know, body kits. I was going to do a bunch of stuff to Katrina's car, right? I was going to put all this body kit. It's expensive as shit too, right? So I'm putting it all, oh, that would be sick, whatever like that. And the only reason why I was doing that was because I was in the middle of a conversation with everybody about cars and tricking them out and this and that. So you and got so, all excited. Yeah, so I got all excited and, you know, I and so I started doing it and I put it all in there and then I know, I already know, like I know in three days when I go back to revisit it, I'll be like, nah, it's kind of, yeah. I don't really need that. It's not going to really make anything. I happen. wonder how much uh, impulsive buys have gone through the roof because of online shopping, how fast and oh easy. Oh my God, I guarantee it's been through the roof. I, it is for me. Yeah. I buy stupid shit all the time now. 
Well, yeah. they talk they about it I so mean, easy. Wasn't that one of the things that what what made Amazon so yep. the one click, right? Yep. The mm-hmm. the one click to be able to purchase. Like, oh yeah, no, that's because imagine that. I mean, that's another thing too, right? Luckily, when I'm shopping on a lot of these websites, that I have to input all this information because if it was as easy as like, yeah, you want it here, click and it'll be at your house. And have you guys seen that you can go to other companies try to buy something and it gives you the one click option to pay through Amazon. Have you seen that? Oh no, I didn't. Yeah. So you'll go buy something on it. I've done this a couple of times where I'll go buy something, but the whole process of entering my name and everything half the time I'm like, I don't really want it. But now they'll give you an option, say uh, one click through your Amazon account. I'm like, fuck. Wow. Yes. Because they know they see how powerful it is. I know. Right. I do notice now, uh, and we've brought this up and I know it's not like new news to anybody, but the ability to follow you around after you mention search anything like is crazy now. I mean, yeah. I, I I notice it in conversation. We'll be talking about something in the room, and it's like all of a sudden now I'm getting hit with ads on that all the time everywhere I go. It's like God damn these things. These dude, I'm getting hit with uh, like anti aging peptides and supplements because I've been reading and researching. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, it, and it gets me because I'm like, what's this cool? Dude, New even drug. somebody you're hanging out with mentions something and it'll show up in your ads. It's like it's not an accident. That's what I was. That, I'm noticing weird shit like yeah, that. They, there's a mic. They're they're picking up on it. It's, like certain it's words. video. It's like, dude, there's so much more going on with your phone than we realize. We're gonna find out later. They've been spying on us the whole time. Oh my god. <laughs> you know you brought up uh, peptides and so i just, i want to get better at every time we bring that stuff up because i still get tons of messages um we have a free uh, mind pump hormones forum so you got questions about peptides testosterone both men and women mm-hmm. twice a month we've got doctors in there that are talking answering questions for answering free. questions for free this is it's totally free um, they were way better qualified to answer than myself or any of these guys. And so if you have questions around any of that stuff, join the forum and engage with them. And we're all in there and if the you, doctors and the, are in there. If you want a, like a one-on-one um, you know, assessment, they can actually go and break you down or whatever. And that one's not free. If you want that one-on-one assessment, then you go to mphormones.com. You can schedule an appointment. Yes. Otherwise, the forum is free. Yeah. I mean, just like with our, I take advantage of all the free stuff first. Go in there, yeah. learn, ask questions and and see if you're a potential candidate. Hey, real quick, hope you're enjoying the podcast. Look, uh, there's a partner that we work with called Element T, and they make an electrolyte powder that has the appropriate levels of sodium that athletes and fitness fanatics actually need. Now, there's no artificial sweeteners. Again, it's got the right amount of sodium, and it really works. I get phenomenal pumps when I work out with Element T, and it tastes really good. My favorite flavor is watermelon, but don't take my word for it. Try them out for free. This is what they're going to do right now. They're going to send you a free sample pack. Try it out and see for yourself why this company is exploding. In fact, it's growing so fast, Mind Pump invested in the company. They don't just sponsor us. We're also investors. That's a true story. So go check them out. Head over to uh, mindpumppartners.com. Click on Element T and get yourself the free sample pack. All right, here comes the rest of the show. All right. First question is from Wampy Irado. Do you see any advantage in tracking your workouts? Do you recommend any app or method for that? Of course. Yeah. Tons of value in tracking your workouts, mainly because we can get caught up in the workout itself, the feeling, right? So uh, I've done this many times where I, I I probably should have a deload week, but because I had a good pre-workout or I'm coming in, I'm feeling hyped. I end up pushing myself harder than I, than I should. Um, also it's hard to keep track of everything in your mind, you know, whether it be reps or technique or form or how you felt or stiffness. Um, oftentimes the only thing we tend to keep track of is the weight that we lift and we kind of tend to forget other things. So really it's the only way to stay truly objective. Like if you really want to be objective, objective. yeah, Yeah, you got to have numbers and stuff in front of you. Yeah. And I think it's, it's one of those things you hope to be able to kind of have intuitive, level of training where you can, you have enough experience to where when you walk into the gym, you kind of know where to go and how to navigate and how to like, uh, you know, provide your body with the, the sort of stimulus that will help you uh, keep progressing. But um, you're never going to get there until you really take the time out to, to track and, and to be diligent. And it's, it's a discipline in itself to be able to see how you're, what you're doing in the, in the gym is actually helping or maybe not helping quite as substantially as you thought. I mean, it's just like diet. It's the same thing. Yeah. I mean, I think that 
And, and to your point about intuitive training, I mean, that's the end goal, right? The end goal is to be able to intuitively eat and intuitively train. Uh, you don't want to, you don't want to have to track your workouts or track your diet for the rest of your life. That would be awful. Um, but it's kind of necessary to, to have bring awareness around what you're currently doing. Otherwise you're, you're going to estimate off. There's plenty of research to prove that when people, you know, guess what they're doing, they're, they're not accurate at all. So, you know, I, now what's included in that, in my opinion, is following a written workout. So if you're following a MAPS program, I think it's less important that you're tracking. I think there's value to tracking your weight and what you're doing in, within the program. But the most important part is, I think, following something consistently and then, then looking back and measuring what you, what you get from that. So if you're following, say, a MAPS program and you do exactly what it says in there, uh, it's less important that that person, because in a sense you're tracking. I mean, you're yeah. you, you're you're following something that's been <clears throat> written for you. So I think there's value in that. Yeah, in, in tracking would include, of course, uh, exercise, reps, sets. But I used to also tell clients to track how they felt, energy wise, if there was any stiffness or pain. So, like, uh, I'll have a client, you know, do let's say they did a bench press and like, oh, my shoulder feels a little tight. So then I have to go do some priming and they go back. That's something that's good to track because mm -hmm. you tend to forget that. You tend to forget that two weeks, you know, down the line that, oh, my shoulder did bother me a little bit yeah. two weeks ago. And now it's not so much, right? Well, and also, too, like, um, you know, one of those added metrics that I've added, you know, even going through this again, programming with high school kids was. Um, having that that grip test and just to see differences in the day as they came in before the workouts and to see where their uh, central nervous system, like how much it was willing to provide them for the day. And so it was interesting to kind of trace back sleep, for instance, for one factor or stress or just overwhelming amounts of schoolwork or like they had like all these tests and like their performance there was dropped a bit. So it's, it's just, it's good information and data for you then to uh, have knowledge going forward in your training. I do want to defend the people that have chosen not to track and don't ever plan to track. If, if you were at a place, um, with your health and your fitness goals that you um, have accomplished them or you're completely content and happy. I don't want to run faster, jump higher, be stronger. Uh, I just want to be healthy and me exercising uh, is keeping me there. And, and you're content with that. I you're don't. Fine. Yeah, you're fine. It's only somebody who was coming to me and saying, I have X, Y, Z goals or I'm struggling with X, Y, and Z. Uh, do I think it's necessary for us to start tracking these things? Because technically, you know, if you keep your diet in check and you you eat well and you create movement on a regular basis, whether that be through sports or choosing some of your favorite extra, excuse me, exercise for the day or your Zumba class, I don't give a shit. I mean, it's you're it's not necessarily yeah. necessary that you track, but if you're trying to to get somewhere, you have a goal. Uh, and you and you don't. I, I think that's that's kind of silly. Yeah. Here's a little hack too, by the way, because um, I'm old enough to remember what it was like to work out before we had smartphones, and I was definitely more present in my workout. And mm -hmm. tracking your workout can help you be present because you sit down and you write down what's going on, but don't write it in your phone because there's apps and there's social media and there's texting. So bring a notepad with you and a piece of paper. And just the the practice of tracking can make you more present in your workouts. Just the fact that I have something that I have to pay attention yeah. to how I feel. It's accountability too. It's, yeah. And so I'm writing that down. Um, and I do that today. So even now, sometimes when I'm working out, I find myself in between sets, I'll be on my phone. So what I'll do is I'll leave my phone in a corner of the gym. Mm -hmm. and I'll So that when I work out, if I want to go to my phone, I have to get up and walk over to it. And so I don't. And I end up becoming more present in my workouts. I actually have better workouts when I do that. Yeah, so, I've definitely noticed that. Like it, in uh, the coaches and, and myself, we talk about this all the time, that um, there's lots of helpful apps and tools out there in terms of even watching film uh, from previous games or, mm -hmm. um, you know, but it turns into just a distraction that uh, leads pretty much uh, the the undesired result of that is is that they just don't do the work. So Doug's the most consistent out of all of us when it comes to tracking his workout. I think uh, 
for the last eight years that I've known him, I don't think I've ever seen him work out without a notepad. You obviously don't need that anymore. Why do you do it? Well, I'm typically following a MAPS program and uh, I, I do need it. I feel like I need it. I grade all his, his work at the end yeah, of the day. Yeah, <laughs> at the end of the day, I, I'm, at a, so, I'm at a solid A minus right now. Pen out. Yeah. <laughs> but no, I, I just feel like I'm being more mindful, as you had mentioned. And yeah. also I'm tracking my weights, my reps. You know, I'm seeing if I'm making progress. And uh, for me, it's just a, it's a way to stay consistent with my workouts. And I kind of like just yeah. having all these notebooks too. I've got dozens of these things that I've been making over the years. Not that I'll ever look at them ever again, but uh, it's kind of like a feeling of accomplishment. Now, I'll yeah. tell you why I don't track anymore, because I used to track all the time. I stopped because I got caught up in trying to beat my previous workout. So mm -hmm. I noticed when I track, now I've been doing this for a long time. So I'm at the point now where, I mean, it's like the back of my, I know like the back of my hand. So I don't, it's not necessary for me to track anymore. And what I caught myself doing was when I would track, I would look at my, my notebook for today's workout compared to the previous workout. And it, it, I would always find that nagging voice that was like, Oh, you gotta do one more rep. Don't be a pussy. Or yeah, add a little <laughs> bit of weight. And so I stopped, uh, I stopped tracking altogether, but I do, um, I do try to stay present by keeping my phone across the gym. But for most people, you, you know, unless you've been working out for a long time, it's a good idea. It's definitely a good idea. Yeah. Next question is from seedlings coaching. Would you recommend electric s muscle stimulation for someone who needs to build lots of muscle? No, it's a <laughs> no. waste of time. No. Yeah. You know, okay. Simple so, answer, no. So, okay, STEM has been around for a long time. So I know that, it, and this is one of those things in fitness that gets it recycled. Making, it keeps making its way back. It gets recycled year after year. It'll either be like a belt that you wear around your core and you can do crunches while you're at work or you know, they have ones for your butt Little now. pads that you just stick on specific yeah. target the new muscles. Ones, right, this technology's been around forever. The yeah. new ones that are getting popular right now, the ones that you saw Ben Greenfield do recently, I've seen some of these bodybuilder coaches <laughs> using them, where people are actually working out while they're while they're shocking themselves, which yeah, I find I don't really see, interesting. I do not see, there, those are so not pragmatic whatsoever. You got this big ass machine with these wires, wires sticking out of your pants and stuff. No one's going to do that. Ridiculous. Uh, no. And what are you going to do? You can activate a little bit more muscle fiber. You know how you do that, by the way, you try this, do a really strong isometric yeah. where you're pushing against it. Okay. So nothing activates more muscle fibers like pushing against an immovable object. So what happens is let's say I'm, I'm, I'm doing a bench press, but the bar is, let's say I have it stuck on the safety. So I'm not going to lift the bar, but I push as hard as I can. Because I'm pushing and the bar isn't moving, my body starts to recruit more and more and more mm -hmm. muscle fibers. And nothing has been shown to recruit more muscle fibers than that. So if you want to get the effects that they purport with STEM by activating more muscle fibers, do an isometric rep like I just described and then go do your normal set. You'll get more out of that than you will with well, fancy machinery. STEM is, is an artificial uh, external stimulus. You're not producing that uh, right intrinsically, and so um, it, you don't develop the skill of it. You're just not, yeah. You're not, you're not developing the skill, and so what are you really training at that point? Uh, maybe you are getting muscle stimulation, but um, you could magnify that like substantially. Just you know, doing a technique like Sal mentioned, um, which would have like massive carryover for the rest of your entire body and your training. Yeah. What do you What are you doing if you're you're telling your muscles to contract hard because of an external signal. The only way it makes sense to me is because you can't fit because you're injured. Yes. Yeah, that, that's, right? where it, oh, no, rehab, that's where it has like, a, a that's yes, rehab, there's, purpose. there's application for rehab. Like I said, stim has been around forever. Yeah. If you're, if I can't move my leg, it's totally incapacitated, then I can do some stim and that'll prevent some muscle loss. We know that, or it'll help rehab an area a little faster. We know that, but no, I, I have yet to see anything that convinces me that this is, worth anything the only person that i would see value that this would have value in is the person that's doing everything perfect is the biohacker influencer who's going to write an article about it or something like that otherwise <laughs> i don't <laughs> exactly <laughs> otherwise it's a complete uh i, I think this is a, a waste of time but even then it's more effective techniques so for me it just kind of pales in comparison now wh what's your thought what's your thoughts on a, as a recovery tool for like let's say somebody over overreached and they're really sore in an area would you would you see any value in stimulating that muscle because if you stimulate that muscle you're obviously going to pump more blood and fluid through it yeah but it's not going to be as good as just moving it yourself yeah it'll do something 
something, yeah. but it's not. It's I guess it's better than nothing. Well, okay, so that's what I'm saying. So yeah. I, I'm laid up at home. I'm watching TV. I should get down and do a flow session because that would promote the same same circulation. Yeah, it's just better I'm, than nothing, right? And so it's like N nominally, yeah, yeah. I would say nominally, but yeah. I mean, I mean, Bruce Lee used uh, stim. Hmm. You know, he, yeah, that's how long it's been around. But it, and no, there's no well, science to support. And that even then, like I'd probably look more into blood occlusion training, totally for rehab in, in terms of like the the value of of the technique. Yeah. Next question is from Coil One Two Three Four. Is soreness a good indicator that your workout was effective? Currently doing a five by five, two to three times per week, and unless I am sore, I feel like I didn't do enough. It's technically the opposite. Yeah, you one know, of the, I remember when I read that, and I was like, kind of blew my mind. Dude, I was just gonna say it's probably one of the biggest game changers that I learned about yeah. with training was that soreness was not an indicator of a good worker. I thought it was so as a kid, right. and if I didn't the get the majority sore, of people still think that. No, my best gains came when I stopped getting sore. That's a fact. Mm -hmm. When 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 my workouts are perfect. I feel them a little bit. That's it. I don't get super sore. When I'm super sore, that tells me I did too much. You overreached. Yep. Yeah. That's yeah. exactly what that's a, that that is exactly what that is that you overreached, which means you could have done less and got the same or more results. And that's the part that you have to understand is that if you are really sore, then you could have done less work and got the same or better results. Because if that soreness hinders at all any of the movement that you go for and do the next day, then it's it's you're taking steps back. You don't realize. Yeah. Plus, you know? we confuse healing with the adaptation. So uh, I'll use a, a different analogy, right? So let's say I cut my hand or I rub my hand with something really rough. So now the skin is gone and uh, the 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 deeper layers are exposed, right? So the skin's tender. First, what my skin does is it heals, so it'll rebuild the skin the skin that I that I rubbed off. And then what it'll do is it'll adapt by developing a callus. Okay, so, so healing. Yes, healing versus ad adapting. <clears throat> so when you create a little bit of damage in your muscle through exercise, your body first heals and then it adapts. So it's got to heal the muscle and then it has to adapt by making it stronger. If you're getting sore, wait till soreness goes away, work out, get sore, wait till soreness away, goes away, works out, and you never adapt, you're just stuck on a wheel. You're just getting sore and then going back and not getting stronger, not improving. So, no, th this is how you should feel after a workout. Maybe a little bit of soreness, but really you should feel better than you did uh, when you walked into the gym. And no soreness is good too. Yeah. The way you gauge the effectiveness of your workout is your progress. That's it. Not your soreness, but am, am I stronger? stronger? Am yeah. I faster? Am I building muscle? Do I have less pain? Like that's how you gauge it. Soreness is a terrible indicator. I can make, look, I can tell you what. I could take an advanced bodybuilder, okay, who works out seven days a week and is on tons of gear and all that stuff, and I could easily make him sore by having him do some shit that he never does. Mm -hmm. I could have him go swim in the pool for 30 minutes. He'll get sore, right? Yeah. Did he build more muscle? No. So terrible indicator. Yeah, I think that's really just, it's the point. Like you you can switch up your training and there's going to be a phase where it's new novel stimulus where your body's going to react to it a little <coughs> bit differently. So it, again, this is where too, the ego, we got to check it because you probably have to do a substantial amount of less weight. And, and that's something that like, you know, most people are just like, well, I can lift quite a substantial amount uh, in this conventional setting versus doing something like this. Like it does, doesn't translate the same. So, um, you know, the soreness you should take as an indicator of, okay, this is something that I need to adjust and maybe like bring scale back just a bit more. So I, I appropriately add uh, this type of stress. Next question is from Joseph Charles. Do carbohydrates cause inflammation? No, that's such a general question too. I yeah. mean, certain foods can cause inflammation depending on the individual. Um, if you have an immune response, for I example. Mean, and they, they could if you're uh, over consuming them. And you're <laughs> I was just going to say overeating causes inflammation, yeah. right? Do some carbohydrates cause inflammation in some people? Yeah, like let's say you have- Like a gluten intolerance or something like that. Yeah, or like uh, you know certain foods uh, you know cause you gastro issues. Well, now they're inflammatory. Some fats can do that as well. Some proteins can as well. Um, overconsumption is probably the, 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 the leading cause of inflammation. Also, or when it comes to food, also we have to consider inflammation. It's not a bad thing. Inflammation is a, a signaler. It tells the, part of the process, tells the body that <clears throat> we need to heal. We need to get stronger. We need to adapt. So you don't want to get rid of inflammation. You just want healthy, appropriate inflammation and carbohydrates don't 
cause it. They can cause it, but that depends on the context of the individual and how many total calories you're eating. Um, and the same thing can be said for proteins and fats. Now, there are certain types of fats, for example, that are almost always inflammatory, like trans fats. Um, sugars may be inflammatory, uh, depending on the individual, um, but for some people, they're not. So it's a, such a general thing. And what's happened in the, in the health space is that we know that inflammation is connected to chronic disease, although inflammation is also connected to building muscle, getting stronger, more endurance, all that mm -hmm. stuff. But we, we know that the inflammation is connected to chronic disease. So now everything's got to be anti-inflammatory. Well, if that were the case, we could take corticosteroids and we could take ibuprofen all day long and we would live a long time, right? Mm -hmm. No. If you do that, you'll live less, uh, you, you, you're, you're short in your lifespan. People who take uh, high, high doses, uh, chronic doses of NSAIDs like ibuprofen or naproxen or other types of drugs that are over the counter, they have higher rates of tendon rupture and ligament damage and joint issues. So you need some inflammation. So it's not all bad. The key is to have appropriate levels of inflammation and to be overall healthy. So this, I can't answer this question, right? It depends on the individual and the context of her life. And if once I look at that, then we can say yes for this person. It's inflammatory. I feel like this yeah. is because of the divide in our space of like the, the, Wellness versus performance. Yes. Yeah, totally. So it's like the, you know, the, the Lane Norton versus the crunchy hippie, you yeah. know, functional doctor who's trying to tell people that. So, so this is another example of what, what frustrates me about our space is you have two intellects that are, are trying to communicate this information. Then instead of it's not black and white, it's not yep. he's right, he's wrong or vice versa. It's, <laughs> you know, there's context matters, you know, and it, and, who and finding out too how how every everything affects you differently. I mean, it's been really cool, you know, since we've been wearing these glucose monitors, uh, just paying attention to just how all the foods affect me differently. And and so a lot of times it's like I wouldn't have guessed that. I'll I'll eat something and I'll be like, oh wow, I bet that's gonna spike big time. And then it doesn't. Or something I'm like, oh, that wasn't that big of a deal. Holy shit, look how much yeah, that's no, isn't that weird. It, it's very weird. And yeah. it's and it's unique to me. So the same thing that affects me that way is different than than Sal and just so I just think that there's tremendous value in figuring that out for yourself, but these these statements that our space come out with, which yeah. we're I think, always looking for a boogeyman. Yeah. You know, it doesn't matter. It shifts all the time too, and so carbs have definitely taken on that villain characteristic. Oh, they're and, going after protein. Yeah, remember I told you guys when we first started the podcast that I knew protein would be next, and it sure enough, now you're seeing people talk about how cutting protein leads to longevity and protein spikes. MTOR, which can feed cancer and all that stuff. And it's like, well, yeah, in, in a pro-cancer environment, uh, proteins and carbohydrates feed cancer because it's a cell. Yeah. But in, an anti, in, a, in a healthy environment, it, does, it doesn't work that way. I, I think this also comes from the fact that being in a ketogenic diet, ketones themselves have anti-inflammatory effects. But that doesn't mean carbohydrates are inflammatory. It just, it just means that ketones, depending on the context, can be anti-inflammatory for some people. So Again, this is way too general of a question. And no, they're not the boogeyman. Uh, carbohydrates are totally fine. Of course, they're not all created equal. And context matters the most. That matters the most. If, you, if the context mm -hmm. is a pro-inflammatory, high-calorie, unhealthy individual, well, yeah, carbs can be inflammatory. So can proteins and fats for that person too. Well, though. and I think generally, like what we found the most is like uh, being in a surplus enhances whatever effect that has. Oh, right? dude. So whatever totally. the food affects you, if you're in a surplus more than often, you're going to experience, you know, a more powerful result of that. Totally. Look, if you like our information, head over to mindpumpfree.com and check out all of our guides. We have guides that can help you with almost any fitness or health goal. You can also find all of us on social media. So Justin is on Instagram at Mind Pump Justin. Adam is on Instagram at Mind Pump Adam. And you can find me on Twitter at Mind Pump Sal. 